my name is Emma. Welcome to my channel. I am an artist and DIYer. Today I'm going to be giving you five different ideas on how to upcycle, reinvent, redo 99 cent store and Dollar Tree Christmas decor. There's absolutely nothing wrong with decorating on a budget. I definitely do it. All of my decor is going to probably be from either the Dollar Tree, the 99 cent store, or the thrift store. And hopefully I'll be doing a video on upcycling thrift store Christmas decor later. But I just went to the 99 cent store and Dollar Tree, looked around at the decor and they actually had some really good things, but there were a few things that I got that I just wanted to elevate a little bit. A lot of the decor, although cute, needed minor tweaks. My style tends to be more boho, so a few of the pieces I made a little bit more boho, some of them I made more modern, and some of them were just very, very small tweaks. I'm going to be doing a ton of holiday slash Christmas deal DIYs, so make sure you subscribe on here, follow me on TikTok, follow me on Instagram, which I'll link below, and let's get right into it. This first DIY definitely has a boho vibe that I was talking about. I grabbed one of these felt snowflakes from Dollar Tree. Now this was already pretty cute as is, but the rounded corners kind of reminded me of like Comic Sans or those foam letters you get when you're a kid. Uh, they're just a little bit childish, so I cut each of the corners to give it, I don't know, a little bit more of a mature look. And then I took the spray paint khaki by rust-oleum and this stone spray paint and sprayed the whole thing because I wanted to get rid of the fact that it's felt and kind of cover up that texture a little bit. I grabbed these skewers which are actually from the 99 cent store but it's possible that Dollar Tree has them and started measuring out where I wanted to put them. Now each of the points that I cut I ended up putting the pointy part of the skewer on and then I also once I cut one measurement I cut the rest of them and laid them out. You can glue as you go totally up to you. I kind of was just winging it, freehanding it, trying to make sure each of the ends had a point. You can copy my design exactly or do whatever you want, but I think this elevates it a little bit, gives it some more texture, and makes it a little bit more interesting. If you're feeling brave or copying my design exactly, I would actually glue right after you cut. I set everything up and then I had to take it all off and glue it, so it'll save you a little bit of time if you glue it either by section or by piece. I then very carefully took a little bit of hot glue and put it on the back of each and again, very carefully set them down. This was a delicate process, but it was actually pretty relaxing and I think it was well worth it. And then at the end, I went back and added these tiny little bits in the middle just to elevate it a little bit more. I love the way this turned out. I think I'm gonna make more and the color fits just so much better in my home. And I think it's a lot more modern and boho, which is my vibe. I left it as is, but you can spray paint it again with the Khaki by Rust-Oleum and that texture spray paint if you wanna make the whole thing look universal. But I like it how it is, but it's totally up to you. Next up, I made my own pillow out of a bath mat and a pre-made pillow. I guess, from the 99 cent store. Now, this one did cost a little bit more because the 99 cent store, unlike Dollar Tree, generally does have more expensive items. So I think the total came out to maybe around $7, but I still think it's a great value. Now, I hot glued mine. Was this the best idea? No. <laughs> does it save time? Yes, absolutely it does. Do I recommend hot gluing? depends on how many people are sitting on your couch. Hot gluing is going to be effective. It probably will last for a bit. Is it a forever thing? No. If you want a forever thing, you can whip out your sewing machine or you can even whip out fabric glue, which would be more effective, but I wanted something that was super quick. The only downside about hot glue is that it probably won't last as long and it's a little bit harder when you touch it but it still worked for me and if you want to do it a little bit nicer you are more than welcome to do so so i totally lied about the prices i guess i'm that bad at math the pillow is 3.99 and the bath mat was 4.99 so that comes out to a total of nine but i just cut off all the tags and i started kind of shearing back some of the fuzziness on the edges of the bath mat just so when i glued i would get a lot of surface area and then i just folded it in half and started gluing. I did it seam by seam, pressing down and making sure it was nice and sturdy. And then I did the same thing on another seam by shearing it a little bit and then gluing it down. Everything I've done so far has been inside out, so I flipped it right side out and made sure all of those corners were nice and pointy, and it did end up being a little bit longer, which you could leave it as is and give the pillow a little bit of space, but I ended up cutting off the excess and just gluing those two seams together. So it was at this point that my camera 
stopped recording. I have no idea why I did that and I'm terrified it's going to do it again, but pretty much all I did was just glue the ends together. If you want to be fancy, you can fold them down and glue them so they don't have raw edges. Mine, I just figured it was going to be on the bottom. We don't have a lot of people over, so my house is more of an Instagram house, you know, don't touch anything or else it'll ruin the illusion of it. Everything held together by a thread. But you could also, if you want to be better, hand stitch this part and have just the rest of it be hot glued. You can take a mixture of laziness, choose your laziness level, it's up to you. I chose maximum laziness, but I still love the result. This pillow seriously turned out so well. It's so soft and it kind of gives me candy cane vibes and the seams actually look really good. I would never know this was just a bath mat. So I swear this next one will be the last crochet tutorial I will ever do. I don't, I can't promise it, but I hope it. I've only done one crochet tutorial before and it was on TikTok and literally all of the comments were like, what on earth are you talking about? So I apologize in advance. I am self-taught except for this one stitch that I'm gonna show you, but I'm self-taught in knowing how to make forms and whatnot. Actually, for my senior thesis, I crocheted life-size sculptures of humans out of crochet. And again, I use this same technique, the same single stitch, so I don't really know a ton of terminology. I got my yarn from Dollar Tree and I'm using a crochet hook and I'm trying to follow this cone of a tree. <laughs> I just made that loop, whatever it's called, and I'm just doing single crochets. I think I did about three in a circle and then you're gonna connect back to that first one and you're just adding more crochets as you go. So pretty much you're making a tiny circle now and you're just adding extra stitches as you go to make the circle bigger and bigger until you get to the end. I know this is not very technical, but I have another kind of small tutorial for you if you don't know how to crochet. So I apologize if that made no sense, but you're just making a cone. Once I finished, I cut off the excess and looped it through, tied it off. And then I had initially found this other cone but I switched cones and here we are with the new cone. This one I got from the 99 cent store. It's definitely cute, but I think a cozy element of crochet could be even cuter. So I cut it to the size that I crocheted because again, there was a little switcheroo <laughs> switch up. And then I found these lights also at the 99 cent store. I love these. Every time I see them, I snag them, cut some holes and stuck the lights through. And that's how I got this Christmas tree. But if you don't crochet or you want something that will take less time, I am going to show you a super quick alternative to this. Another thing you could do is just get some really fuzzy yarn and glue it around the cone. I think that would look great and you'd still be able to poke the lights through. You would just take the cone and put a strip of hot glue and then take your fuzzy yarn and wrap it around. You can stick the lights through just the same way and this is also very cute and much more simple. If I were to do it again, I would still get fuzzier yarn. I just wanted to use the yarn that I had. That was from Dollar Tree, but I would probably invest in a little bit fuzzier yarn so you can't see all the blemishes. Now with this one, I'm not sure to what extent this is a fire hazard. So a lot of my DIYs have potential fire hazards. So maybe just proceed with caution. Are these LED lights? I'm not sure if they heat up, maybe don't do the lights or maybe don't leave them on for a long time. I'm not trying to get any of you killed. That would be bad. This next one is incredibly simple and I must say I do love these little houses the way they are, but I was trying to elevate them a little bit and I've been seeing a lot of stone and natural textures as I'm looking at more expensive Christmas decor. So I thought I would flip these and give them kind of a natural stone look with that same spray paint you saw earlier. I got these little tea light holder houses at the Dollar Tree. And although again, they're super, super cute, you can color them whatever you want, but I used this primer, which was in gray. I did end up having to do a second coat with a thicker primer and I used that same texture spray. It gives it more of a stone look, more of maybe a modern look, but I think these are a blank slate. You can do whatever you want with them. This one's kind of a bonus one, barely a DIY, but I saw these brown fuzzy deer at the 99 cent store. I thought they were super cute, but the color of the brown was not it and it was all one tone. So I just took it home and pretty much spray painted it. As you can see, it just looks a little cheap and that kind of lowers the quality. There are a bunch of scuff marks. So cut off the tag and just right on the top, I gave it a few coats of light black spray paint. And I think it turned out really well. It looks like it glows from the bottom and it just looks a lot more expensive. And this was such an easy flip. 
This last one is kind of a painting tutorial and if you don't know, I have been a painting teacher for seven years maybe. That's actually pretty much the only job I've ever had before social media. So let me know if you like the painting tutorial I'm about to show you and I'm happy to do more. This one I was making up as I go. Normally I paint it and then I'm able to break it down a little bit more. So if I seem kind of crazy and all over the place, that's why. But what inspired this is I love these MDF signs I have at Dollar Tree. They're super, super smooth on the back side, and I'm always tempted to paint them. So I grabbed one and I actually painted one in my last YouTube tutorial as well. But for this one, I wanted to do my own design that was a little bit more boho rather than a little, just a little cheesy. Like no offense if you like this, cause it's totally fine. But just like slight cheese. I wanted to go more boho and I love the way it turned out. They have a ton of different options of these signs at Dollar Tree. I grabbed this one that said, let it snow. Again, not really my style, but that backspace is a blank slate. So I poured out some brown, green, two different types of yellow, white, black, and I also ended up doing some red. I started off by taking some brown and maybe a little bit of water and swiping up and down. I'm trying to create kind of a wood pattern. You can see where I added a little bit of yellow as well. And then at the very end, I took some watered down brown paint and smeared it all over the whole thing so I didn't have any open spaces. Then I mixed a muted green with some white and those yellows and a tiny bit of red because I wanted to kind of neutralize that green color and made a long line all the way down the middle so I know where to follow for my leaves of my tree. Now these branches are going to kind of follow an arrow pattern. It's almost like I'm making a bunch of arrows and diagonal lines facing downward and then coming out of those diagonal lines is a bunch of other tiny lines. So I'm making a strip and then doing a bunch of tiny lines underneath it making a strip and then doing a bunch of tiny lines underneath it. And then I have some that are kind of free floating, uh, but it really is pretty simple, just a few lines. And as we're going down, it's pointy at the top, super, super pointy at the top, and we're getting thicker and thicker as we go down. I didn't go all the way down because I wanted to leave a little bit of space for my trunk. And then for some finishing details, I did add some highlights, which means I just took some white, mixed it into my paint and tapped it a little bit all over to give it a little bit more dimension. I used some dark yellow and black for the trunk. You could use brown and black as well and gave it a little bit of ground. I decided to add some snow as well. So I took some plain white and tapped it along the tops of the branches. Keep in mind the outsides of the branches would get the most snow. So really focusing on getting those outsides of the arrow. Again, it's still an arrow, two diagonal lines going downwards. Kind of the end of the branches can sag a little bit because they're weighed down with some snow and I carried that highlight down onto the trunk and then I threw in some little tiny dots of snow. Make sure some are clumped together. You don't wanna end up looking like polka dots. You want some that are a little bit clumped together and that'll give it more of a natural look. And then I decided to add some snow on the ground. I'm using the natural darkness of the background to be shadow, so I'm just tapping it all along the bottom. And I think it turned out super cute. It definitely gives off more of a boho vibe and it's not totally overtly Christmas, which is not super my style. It's more simplistic. Thank you so much for watching. I have got so much more content planned for y'all. I am so excited. Let me know what you think. Again, make sure to like this video, subscribe, follow me on TikTok, follow me on Instagram where I post sneak peeks and daily updates. And if you like any of the butterflies behind me, visit my Etsy shop, which I'll also link below. It's a great holiday gift if you're looking for one. Let me know if you have any questions and happy making.